<clears throat> okay, this new unit that we're going to talk about is all about polynomials. So that might be a new word for you, which is okay. We are going to define it today. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go through a bunch of vocab. And I've already filled in the vocab definitions for you. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at examples of each of these new vocabulary words. So the first one we're going to talk about is a constant. So a constant is a number without any variables. So say I'm looking at the equation like x squared plus 3x minus 7. Then this 7 at the end, that's going to be my constant. There's no variables on it. It's just kind of by itself. That's called the constant. The next one is a coefficient. So a coefficient is the number that's in front of a variable. So let's look at the same polynomial, x squared plus 3x minus 7, and we're going to look at the coefficients. Now the easiest coefficient to see is this 3, right? This 3 is a number in front of a variable. What we don't see, or what might be harder to see, is that there are actually two other coefficients that are somewhat hidden. So the first one is that there is a number in front of the x squared, and that number is a 1. Remember, if we don't see a number in front of the variable, then the number is 1. So that's also going to be our, a coefficient. The other kind of hidden coefficient is the 7. So 7 can actually be written with x to the, it's 7x to the 0, because remember, x to the 0 power is just 1. So really, that 7 is also a coefficient. Okay. So if I were to list my coefficients of this polynomial, it would be 1, 3, and negative 7. Okay, you always keep the sign that's in front of it. The next thing is a variable. A variable represents an unknown or changing quantity. So lots of times we see this in, you know, just what we looked at before, x squared plus 4. Uh, we could have any number, right? It could be like m squared plus 5m. Okay, any number or letter, will, any letter will, will work, really. The next term is an expression. So an expression is like a mathematical phrase that doesn't have an equal sign. So actually the equations or the, the things we were looking at earlier were actually expressions. So for example, x squared plus 3x minus 7, that's a mathematical expression. Now an important part of an expression that makes it unique is that it does not have an equal sign. So for example, if I had x squared plus 3x minus 7, right, that same expression, but now I set it equal to 5, this is no longer an expression. That's called an equation. So most of the time when we're doing math, we're either dealing with expressions or we're dealing with equations. And today and in this unit, we're going to be dealing a lot with expressions. So basically, things that don't have equal signs in them. Okay, the next vocab word is a term. A term is a number, a variable, or the product of numbers and variables. So here's just kind of some examples. So for example, 4. 4 is a number, so 4 is a term. A variable, so we might just have x, or maybe we have an x squared. Both of those would be terms. Or we might have a product of numbers and variables. So maybe we have like 4x squared. Or maybe we even have more than one variable. 4x squared, y to the third. Right? So all of these would be examples of what a term looks like. Okay, so the next big vocab word is a monomial. So we're going to break this up to its Latin roots. So mono means one and nomial means term. So a monomial just means one term. So actually when we were making that list of terms in the last definition, those were all monomials. So let's take another uh, look at some examples of monomials. So, you know, we could just have an x, we could have an x squared, we could have a 15x to the fifth power. We can have anything as long as it's just one term. Here's some examples of things that are not monomials. If I had like an x plus 3, that is not a monomial because I am adding two terms together. The x is a term and the 3 is a term. Okay. Another thing that's not a monomial would be 2 to the x power. Okay, that's not a monomial because I don't have a product of numbers and variables. Here what I have is 2 raised to the power of a variable. So that's not going to be a monomial. Another thing is going to be the square root of x. Okay, the square root of x is also not a monomial because I am taking the square root of it. Okay, it's not a product of numbers or variables. <clears throat> okay, 
So let's talk about a binomial. A binomial is super similar to a monomial, but this bi out front means two. So now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking two terms and adding them together. So we could have x plus five, we could have three x squared plus seven. We could also be subtracting terms. So like x minus seven, that also counts as a binomial. So when I say added, it could also be subtracted. So let's write that down too. Okay. And a trinomial is pretty similar too. A trinomial just means that I have three terms. So I could have x squared plus 4x minus 7. I could get kind of crazy with my exponents. Uh, 3x to the hundredth power plus 15x squared minus 10. Okay, those would all be trinomials. Okay, and this last, this next vocabulary word is the term you're probably going to hear the most. A polynomial. Okay, a polynomial is one or more terms that are added together. So monomials are polynomials, binomials are polynomials, trinomials are polynomials, then you can even make them bigger. So we could just have x as a polynomial, x plus 3 could be a polynomial, x squared minus 5x plus 7 is a polynomial. We could also get into something really long. We could have x to the 5th, plus 3x to the third minus x squared plus 72, right? That would also be a polynomial. So the idea is that I'm adding a bunch of terms, adding or subtracting a bunch of terms. Okay, the next thing we want to talk about is what is a like term? So like terms are terms that have the same variable and the exponent on the variable is also the same. So for example, if I have two terms, 3x squared, and 4x squared, these two terms are like terms because they have the same variable x and the variable exponent is 2 on both of them. Also things like x and 7x, those are also like terms because remember that these x's have the same, the same exponent of 1. So let's look at an example of something that would not be a like term. If we had 3x squared and 3x, that would not be a, those would not be like terms because even though they have the same variable, one of the x's is squared and one of the x's doesn't have an exponent. So its exponent is just 1. So 3x squared and 3x are not like terms. Also, if I had like 3y squared and 3x squared, those would not be like terms because the variables are different. One has an x and one has a y. Okay, so last big definition that we're going to get is standard form. So standard form is just a special way to write a polynomial that makes it easy for us to answer a bunch of questions about it. So standard form of a polynomial means that you write the exponents in decreasing order. So you start with the biggest exponents and then the variables go in alphabetical order. So some examples of standard form would be like... Uh, x squared minus x plus 7. See how my, variable, my exponents start at 2, and then 1, and then the exponent of 0. Okay. Um, let's say I have something that has multiple variables in it. If I have like x's and y's. Well, x is first alphabetically, so I would start with my x's. So 3x squared y, you know, plus xy plus 10. Okay, so this would also be standard form because I started with my x's and each of these individual terms is written with the x's first and then the y. Okay. So we are going to answer a bunch of questions about polynomials and when you start giving answers, you're always going to want to write your answer in standard form. So always write your answer in standard form. Whoops, I was writing the wrong right. Okay, so let's talk about um, a couple other things that we're going to be doing. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how to find the degree of a polynomial. So the degree of a polynomial is another important vocabulary word, and it just means what is the biggest exponent that you see on a variable. So what you would do is you would put the polynomial into standard form, so I'll just make one up. 
Okay. And once it's in standard form, I just look for the biggest exponent on a variable. So in this case, this 3, that's the biggest exponent on a variable. So that means that the degree of this polynomial is 3. Okay, and you're going to hear about degree a lot as you move forward through all of Math 2 and Math 3. Okay, let's look at a couple uh, things that would make an expression not be a polynomial. So we've looked at a lot of examples of what polynomials are. Now let's look at some examples of what polynomials are not. So one reason for an expression to not be a polynomial is if one of the exponents is a variable. So for example, if you have like 2 to the x plus x, that is not a polynomial because one of your exponents is a variable. Another thing that makes an expression not be a polynomial is if you have an exponent that's negative, like x to the negative 2. If you have an exponent that's a fraction, like x to the 1 third, or an exponent that's a decimal, like x to the 0 0.1. Okay, All of these things, if you saw any of these terms in a polynomial, it would actually not be a polynomial. Okay, Another thing is if you see a variable underneath a radical, so if you like to see the square root of x, or the square root of x to the fifth y, something like that, that would make it say it was not polynomial. And the last thing that makes an expression not a polynomial is if you're dividing by a variable. So anytime that you see the variable on the bottom of a fraction, you are in trouble. It is not a polynomial. Okay. So what I'm going to have you guys do now is in this next section, you have some examples where you can identify if these expressions are polynomials or not. Okay, I'm going to let you guys work through this by yourself. I will post the completed answer key on Canvas so you can check your answers after. <clears throat> and the reason I'm skipping that is because I want us to be able to talk about adding and subtracting polynomials. So sometimes we're going to want to take two polynomials and add them together or subtract them. So here are the steps that we would follow. First, if we're, dis if we're subtracting, we would distribute the negative sign. So say I have x squared plus 2 minus um, 3x squared minus 5. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this negative and distribute it inside my parentheses. So that's going to turn into, my first parentheses will stay the same, x squared plus 2. And now I'm going to have a negative 3x squared plus 5. And now I am adding my two uh, polynomials together. Okay, So I'm changing, first of all, I'm just changing my subtraction to addition, basically. The next thing I want to do is identify and combine like terms. So I'm just going to rewrite these, this problem that we're working on. So one set of like terms that I see is that I have an x squared and I have a 3x squared. Okay, They are like terms because they have the same variable and the same variable exponent. So I would combine these by adding their coefficients. So I have 1x squared, I'll write a little 1 in there, and I have negative 3x squared. So it's like 1 minus 3. So I have a negative 2x squared. Okay. The next set of like terms that I see is that I have a 2 and I have a 5. Okay, And I'm adding those together, so 2 plus 5 is going to be 7. Okay. So I'm just finding those terms that are the same and adding them together. The final step is to write your answer in standard form. The example we just did is in standard form because I'm starting with the biggest exponent and then decreasing. Okay, so these are the simple steps to add and subtract polynomials. Let's, I'm going to work through example A for you guys so that we can see an example of addition. The one we did in with the steps up here, that was a subtraction problem. Now let's look at an addition problem. Addition is actually easier because I get to sk skip the first step. I don't have to distribute any negative signs. I'm just going to jump right to combining like terms. So I am going to look for anything that has an n squared to start with. So I have a 5n squared and I have a negative 3n squared. So if I combine the 5n squared with the negative 3n squared, I get 2n squared. Okay. And then if I look at my other like terms, I'm going to look at anything that doesn't have a variable. I have a negative 2 and a positive 7. When I add those together, I get plus 5. So 2 and squared plus 5 is going to be my final answer for that one. And I'll fill in the rest of this key and post it on Canvas.